This video will introduce the basics of how to use the TI-83 Plus graphing calculator and will also teach how to use the graphing calculator for linear equations. I choose linear equations as my examples for the basics video because they are the simplest type of equations. Here on the left I have three straight line equations. Each one has a small table of values showing only the x-intercept and y-intercept. I also have three small hand-drawn graphs. As you can see, for the first graph, I can scale my graph paper so that each square on the graph paper is equal to one unit. And the line fits nicely on the graph. I can see my x and y-intercepts. For the second line, this line passes quite close to the origin. And if I want to be able to see the x and y intercepts distinctly, then I scale my graph paper differently so that each square on the graph paper is equal to about a quarter of a unit. For the third line, the opposite situation is true. I have big numbers in my x and y intercepts. So I have to scale the graph so that each square on the graph paper is equal to 10 units so that my x and y intercepts will fit on this small graph and I can see them. Now let's try entering one of these equations into the graphing calculator. The first thing I'm going to do is press the y equals button, which is here. And this allows me to enter several equations at once, so long as the y is isolated on the left side of the equals in my equations. So I have to type in the 2x plus 4 part in that first line, it says y equals, I put 2, this is the x button here, plus 4, and now I press the graph button which is up here on the top right. I have a graph that I can see easily, I can see the x and y intercepts distinctly. Now I would like to see a table of values for this linear equation. The word table is in yellow above the graph button, so that means if I press second graph, I can see a table of values for this equation. And I can see my y-intercept on the table, it says 0, 4. But the x-intercept is on the table as well. It has to be higher up the table, because it is the point where the y-coordinate is equal to 0. But this table is actually a lot bigger than what we see right now. And if I press this up arrow button a few times, now I can see the x-intercept, negative 2, 0. And at the moment, I can still see the y-intercept at the same time. We can find a lot of the key points for our equations by scrolling up and down the table of values in this way. Another thing I want to look at is the scale settings. Even though the scale is done quite well for this graph, let's see what it looks like. If we press the window button, we can see some values. X min equals negative 10, X max equals 10. Y min equals negative 10, Y max equals 10. What this means is that the part of the graph that's showing in the display goes from negative 10 to 10 on the x-axis and from negative 10 to 10 on the y-axis. We also see x scale equals 1, and y scale is equal to 1. What that means is that there's a little dash on the axis for every single unit, which is useful in this case. Now let's try entering the second line, y equals x minus 0.5. I'm going to go into the y equals, and I'm going to press clear to remove the first equation. Now I'm going to enter y equals x minus 0.5. The y equals is already there, so I press x minus 0.5, and I press graph. I can see my line, but as I pointed out when we first looked at this equation, this line passes very close to the origin, and it's hard for me to see my x and y intercepts distinctly. So I'm going to use the zoom feature in order to see them better. Here is the zoom button. I press it. And I want to zoom in. 
So I'm going down to number two, zoom in. I hit enter to choose that. And then I hit enter again. And if I want one more time. Now I can see my graph quite well. I can see my X and Y intercepts quite clearly. I can also see the effect that what I have done in zooming has had on the scale. By pressing the window button, I can see the scale has now changed. The X scale and Y scale are both still one unit, but the X min and X max, Y min and Y max have changed so that the display is now showing from negative 0.625 to positive 0.625 for both axes. Now let's try entering the third equation. I hit y equals, I hit clear to remove the second equation, and now I have to enter 2x plus 40. 2x plus 40, and I hit graph. And my graph doesn't show my line. Because these numbers are so big, the display of the graphing calculator is zoomed in too close to be able to show this line. So I have to change the scale again. But this time, instead of using the zoom button, I'm going to directly do it with the scale button. I press window, and instead of point, negative 0 0.625 and 0 0.625, I'm going to enter negative 50 and positive 50. Negative 50, positive 50. I'm also going to change my X scale and Y scale from 1 to 5. If I don't do that, then I will have too many little dashes on my axes and I won't be able to see the dashes and count them very well. When I hit graph, now this line looks very similar to the way the first line looked, but it is scaled differently. So we can make a large line that doesn't pass very close to the origin show on the display by manipulating the scale. Let's look at the table of values again. Second graph, and I see my table of values. I can see my y-intercept 040 down here at the bottom of the table, but the x-intercept will be much higher up in the table than this. But if I press the up arrow and keep pressing it for a while, I get to my x-intercept, and there it is, negative 20, 0. Next, we are going to look at what it looks like when we graph all three of these lines in the calculator at once. Okay, I go into my y equals interface. I already have y equals 2x plus 40 entered, so I'm pressing the down arrow, and I'm going to enter the other two equations, 2x plus 4, down arrow, x minus 0.5. And when I hit graph, all three of these lines are going onto the graph at once. But I can only see two of them, and that is because of the scaling on the graph. If I want to be able to see the third line, I'm going to have to zoom out. I'm pressing the zoom button again. This time I go down to number three, zoom out, I hit enter to choose it. And if I hit enter again, I'm going to zoom out. And I can see all three lines at once. If I want to see all three tables of values at once, I do second graph to see the table. And as you can see, I have a single X column in my table and I have y1 and y2 columns. The y columns are showing for the first and second equations that are entered. If I want to see the third one, I have to hit the right arrow a couple of times. Now I can see the third one, I can't see the first one anymore. The calculator keeps on showing the x column. I can go back and forth to see any of my tables, anytime I want. These are the basics of using the graphing calculator. 
And this is how to use the graphing calculator for linear equations.